Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah A question was asked If you know someone who is insisting on uniting the Muslims regardless of differences in creed despite being advised that this isn't the correct way according to the sunnah how much of a major issue is this in terms of me being friends with such a person Jazakallah khairan Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita fillah as we know from the usul of Ahl al-Sunnah that being away from Ahl al-Bid'ah and all of those ahkam of how to deal with people who have innovated in the religion and unfortunately many people have misused and, abu and abused and even at times misinterpreted uh, those principles and not contextualizing them, not putting them in their rightful place, uh, using them and making hajar of people very uh, hastily uh, without the right to do so for any mistake that they make or any time they don't agree with them or don't agree with their clique or group. And this is a very dangerous thing. And probably more dangerous than a person uh, applying that principle uh, is to apply it, uh, or not applying that principle, uh, is to be reckless with that principle and be extreme. So that doesn't mean being mumeya. So first, that's what we do have to understand, is that uh, these principles, as the scholars mention, and as many of the masail or issues in the religion pertain to uh, al-masalih wal-mufasid, looking at the harms and the benefits of these things. That's why every situation is different. Every circumstance is different. The context, what's going on in the society, Uh, the nature of the society. Is it a society where Ahl al-Bid'ah is strong or Ahl al-Sunnah is strong? Is it a society where there's going to be uh, a greater benefit by applying these principles or is it going to be a greater harm? And many, many things. And with regards to the individual, is it going to scare the mukhalif, the person who's made a mistake, off? Or is it going to uh, either protect you and your religion or reprimand them and they will actually come back to the sunnah if, that, if that's the case. So there's so many masail uh, that are involved. So with regards to this, uh, with a person having this understanding, which is many of the Muslims, if you were to try to implement that, then you would pretty much be alone without many of the Muslims to, uh, you know, as your companions at all and as your brothers and sisters they are your brothers and sisters in the deen so what i would say is is that you continue to be patient with them because the prophet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and foremost commanded us with patience and inviting to patience uh, you know and being being patient and this is the call the minhaj of the nba is that they were patient upon that path and patient upon the harm that came with giving da'wah. So, and the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned that there isn't a thing that brings about good except gentleness. You know, brings about good like gentleness. Gentleness brings about good. So being gentle with a person, so if you're quick to cut them off, then uh, perhaps there will be a greater harm. They will just say, oh, Salafis are like this. And... It may not have even a positive effect at all. So you have to look at all of those all of those issues come into play. And that's why uh, it's very important, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them fiqh fi deen. For us to atlab al-ilm and gain fiqh fi deen, so we can try our best and to have some tools to be able to know how to implement these things. And if nothing else, to have the tools to be able to communicate with Ahl al-Ilm, to be able to ask intelligible questions, giving the proper context of our situation on how to implement these uh, these major masail. So, getting back to the core of what you asked, 
my advice would be that you remain patient with this person and depending on your knowledge, you know, continue to convey to them. It doesn't mean every time you see them, you're going to be up in their face. It's like this and I'm giving you 20 days to repent, or 20 days to come to the sunnah or I'm cutting you off or anything like this. Because this is, unfortunately, we laugh about it, but these are sad realities of what have hap what's happened over many years in many countries around the world, not just in the West, in, the, in plen reckless behavior amongst the Arabs and others. And so, again, it's looking at those Masail, al -miyya, and practicing it. And as the Prophet ﷺ said, nothing comes about uh, good, and of course it's a rough paraphrase, uh, from gentleness, except that, as, except that it's good. You know, gentleness brings about good. So being gentle with a person, as long as you do not fear that they're going to harm you in your Aqidah, meaning that they have a lot of issues in Aqidah, it's not just this one issue, okay, they feel that we should unite. You know, this could be something of their desires, but their main usul generally could be Salafi or what have you. But if it's just one issue, but if they're uh, on something completely else, they're, they're, they're basically, you know, a Tekfiri or, or, or something or an extreme Sufi or what have you, then this is going to be other issues of Etiqad. But even then, when dealing with people, there is a fiqh on how to deal with a makhalif, as some of the scholars have written books about this, and that, you know, it's not always about just quickly cutting the persons off. You you have to look at the harms and benefits for yourself, harms and the benefits for those around you, the community, harms and the benefits for the individual. So there's a lot of things to consider. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ilm al-nafi, rizqin tayyibu, amin al-muttaqabbidin, sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.